All right, I'm making a quick video today. Uh, it, it's going to be a simple one, basically, on events, you know, what they do, why you'd want them. And this is a very simple version of events. I think this is something that anybody could sort of use immediately, even somebody who's like sort of new to game programming and maybe even like new ish to programming in general, because I'm going to keep this really simple. Now, I've written out most of the code already, but that's just for time's sake. And because the code is simple enough to where you really don't need to see me write every line of it, it is going to be that simple today. But why would you want events? Well, they help you decouple code. And what is coupling? Coupling is when you have sort of two classes. Like for example, you have a player or main character class like we've made here, and I'll explain what I've done here in a minute. And say you had something like an input system where you were receiving input and then doing something with it, but in order for the main character and the input system to communicate with each other, instead of using events, you did this. You said, okay, well, the input system is now a field in my character class. Once you've done this, they are coupled together. Now, you could do this, and I'm sure in the past people have done this with some success, but it typically tends to make, it typically doesn't tend to scale very well. Uh, as more and more systems come into play, and your character has to be coupled to more and more things, and then there's like other things in the game that have to be coupled to those systems also, and everything ends up being wrapped around each other in a way that makes it really hard to to grow the project uh, as opposed to just having events where like the input system will have an event it'll fire off the event and anyone care who cares about that whatever the input system just did can just simply listen for that event right it also helps your your code have less responsibilities so it helps you avoid things like your character having a having a method that's like public input right and inside that method, he would pull for input and, and then do something with it. So it helps to separate responsibility out into separate classes, which simply do their part of the chain of events, right? You could have the input system take an arrow key. And then if, if you were doing like an entity component system or something, then you could have like a movement system say like, okay, I need to do what I need to do with this. And then you could have the graphics system say, okay, now I need to update where I'm drawing this sprite, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're not gonna do anything quite that complex today. What we're gonna do today is quite simple, but it, I think it's gonna demonstrate that point that you can decouple these classes. You can keep them separate from each other and just have them listen uh, for certain events that are happening now. Now the events we're doing today are simple enough to where I think you can get some immediate use out of them, but maybe they, I don't know that they would be useful for like a really massive project or something, but certainly they've been useful in my projects. Anyways, as usual, the information is just informational. You take it or leave it, you know, if it helps you, awesome. If it gives you ideas about something that maybe you could do, maybe there's something you could do similar but different, that's awesome too always trying to you know just help people get the brain working on how to make their code a little bit uh easier to read easier to use whatever now all i've done here is i've made a few different i've set up a standard libgd libgdx project uh, if you don't know how to do that it's really really easy just google it and then what you get out of the box of the libgdx project is basically just a desktop launcher in this in this basic class you can see i haven't even changed the name of it i left it as the default name of my gdx game now what i have done is i've made some classes and i've filled them in with some very simple stuff and i've put them here i've also set up my run configurations so that when i hit run the game will run obviously that's really easy in a libgdx project typically if you don't want to make the run configuration yourself you can just go here and hit run uh, but that's not necessarily what this tutorial is about. Anyways, let's talk about what I've done. Let's go straight into the events. Let's just talk about the events themselves, how they're, how they're created, etc. At a high level, we have a main character, 
we have an input, we instantiate them. We now in libgdx you have to do this if you're if you're going to have an input processor, which I'll talk about in a second. You have to set it as your input processor, and this is how you do it. So libgdx knows that you're using that as your input processor. But anyways, you see that we've done almost nothing down here, and that's the great part about this. You don't have to have like a player dot update method that's being run every frame. You don't have to have like an input dot update method that's being run every frame. All my render is doing is drawing stuff and all that other stuff is being handled in the back. All that updating is being handled in the background by events as you'll see in a second. And all we've done is we've instantiated these classes and then we've said that the input system is going to have this event and then we've added a listener to it which is the MC's move method. So let's break this down. This is at the highest level uh, and let's sort of go straight into the events, right? So what is an event? Basically, it's really simple. This is the whole thing. And this is all it'll ever need to be, pretty much. So you have a private set, which we know a set is just a list that doesn't contain duplicates. No big deal. We know what a list is of consumers. If you don't know what a consumer is, it's a Java 8 construct for like functional programming stuff. It's really simple. It, it does exactly what it says it does. It's just a method. It's basically a class that has one method and that method accepts some type of object, whatever you set that object to be. In this case, we're saying it's event arg. So we'll go look at the event args class in just a second. And these are our listeners for this particular event once we instantiate it. And maybe if you wanted your events to do significantly more, you could have like subclasses of this event class that, you know, you, that are particular type of events. But I found a generalistic event class pretty much, pretty much works. You can add a listener and you can broadcast or fire off the event to the listeners. I haven't even used Lambda expressions here because I just want to keep this as simple as possible. I just have a hard loop that goes through all the listeners and tells them to accept the arguments. And that's all a consumer does. It has one method that accepts arguments. We'll see that in a second. Really simple. Hopefully y'all can see my text on the screen. It's big enough, but that's that's all a consumer does. You could Google this. Consumers are really simple. But anyways, yeah, we just have a set of consumers that will accept the arg arguments if they, are li if they have been set as listening to the event. Now the event args, super simple too. You have one object, that's your event arguments. I just made it a generic object so that we could put absolutely anything in here. I also have an overloaded constructor for nothing so that the args will just be null because you might have an event fire off that doesn't that doesn't actually need any, any object, right? So here we go. Now, how do we use this, right? Well, you have to make an event. So today I'm gonna to be showing an event through an input processor. If you've never used an input processor, processor in libgdx before, it's incredibly simple and is probably just like input processors in any game framework. Basically, this input processor, once you've implemented the, the interface here, you get all of these classes. And I know this seems intimidating because it's a lot of classes, but basically all this does is once you've set it as the input processor, in libgdx, right? Every time you click a key, click your mouse, do anything, whether you click your mouse, whether you drag your mouse, click and drag your mouse, move your mouse, scroll, key down, key up, do anything, this class is listening for that and will intercept it. So basically, as soon as we click a key, this method will be called because this is our input processor that we've set up as our input processor. You can see, and basically we can we can look for what key that was and do something with it. In this case, we've created an event called right key pressed, and when the key code that we've pressed equals the right key, anything listening for this event is going to get the key code as its event args, and it's just going to yeah, it's just going to be broadcast to all the consumers and they're going to consume the key code. Now, if we go over to the main character, he has one method, 
and once again we skipped using lambdas here even though you could lambdas would be much simpler than this syntax but but i think that the syntax is very straightforward especially for people who are new to to programming and maybe they know a little bit about object-oriented programming but don't know much about lambdas basically you have a consumer and a consumer is just going to be sort of a it's like an anonymous class here right you basically made a new consumer class inside of your class but it's equal to a new consumer that takes event args which we already know and like i said consumers have one method they have the accept method and we are overriding it to do some functionality with whatever args we get now if the args are null we would do nothing with the args but we know that the args we're getting is an integer a key code so we're going to cast it to that you can just cast the generic object to whatever it is now i know what you're thinking this is a really naive way of doing this and you're right that's true in a more sophisticated project you would want to make sure that the args are actually what you're looking for before you were to cast it but in this case we're just going to be naive about it and then we're just doing something in this case we're incrementing this x value and then this x value is being used to draw this bad logic smiley face to the screen. So let's walk through this in, in debug mode, actually, so you can see. Now, we've made, so we know that here, yeah, let's just walk through this in debug mode. Okay, it immediately stops us, right? And the reason why is because when our game starts, it's going in here and it's creating the input system. When it creates the input system, it is creating this, this event, right? Because we create the event in the constructor. And when it creates the event, it then adds the listener. It's like it creates the input system, then it adds the listener. Cool, so we've been stopped here at add listener because we're now at this point in our code. It's creating the game and it's adding this listener. This is basically something you'd have to do right. You'd have to add a high level. You'd have to decide how you're gonna connect these events to the consumers. Here I've just chosen to, in my, in my at the very creation of my game, I'm connecting all the, uh, the events to their, to their consumers. Anyways, cool. So we've, we're adding the listener. All right. So now let's go to the input system. Now, when we press a, the right key, we would expect it right. It stops us here. So our input processor is correct, is correctly polling for input. I've pressed the right key. Now it is going to broadcast to the events broadcast or well it's going to broadcast all consumers of this event the right key pressed so when we continue this we should get stopped in here and we do we get st now the input system has you know gone through and it's looped through the one consumer that we have which we hooked up here the mc's consumer got added to the uh, right key pressed event and now we're gonna activate this code and you can see that it moved. So let's do this outside of debug so you can see what this is doing. So every time I press the right key, that event is firing and that X value is getting incremented by 10. And, that's, and then that's gonna inform where the image is drawn to the screen. So you can see even in this short sort of simple example, basically we can, our render method stays simple because there's no need to update the player. The player is being updated, the player's sort of uh, image is being updated in the background. So all you have to do is draw it to the screen after it's been updated, right? Now you could find a more clever way to do this. Like I said, you can have a lot of interconnected systems and you can make this however complicated you want. You could have the right key press. You know, you could have it connected to like a movement system, which is connected to like 
a drawing system which is like you know connected to whatever maybe maybe you have a map system that that informs the movement system as to whether it even can move right because you don't want to move over top of lava lava or something really this is just here for you to sort of figure out what ways you can use it but you can see how the main character doesn't need to know anything about the input system all it needs to know is that that right key was pressed and i have a method that wants to do something with that right key pressed i you know I don't need to pull for input myself. I don't need to have the input system as a part of my as a part of my class, and then ask it if the right key press right key was pressed. I don't need to have the player in the input system. All I need is the input system to basically say, "Hey, movement player, whoever cares about this, the right key was pressed." And it turns out the char the character cares about it, so he's going to hook himself into it by just right here, and then he's going to listen for it. That's it. Once again, this is not a silver bullet. It's not a foolproof way to to solve like every problem or something that comes along with game code and coupling. But if you find it useful, this is something that I've found useful. Uh, when making games and like I said just like events chain them into each other you know and uh, helps you clean things up a little bit and this is like the simplest version of events I can think of basically and if you think that like hey you know what I don't want to make this public I'd rather have a make this private have a getter for it etc totally fine if you change these however you want they're so simple and generic for a reason. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, like, I don't want to do this with objects. I would rather do it with generics or something. Totally fine, too. This is just, like I said, it's just informational. If you get something out of this, great. Uh, I'm glad it helped you. And if there's something that I just blew past too absolutely too quickly and you have a question about, you know, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll, I'll probably be there to get to it. Anyways, thanks for listening.